Trail Tech Endurance 2. Let's put it on, I'll show you how. Sticker. How to operate it. Directions. This is probably the paper you want to pay attention to. Just to get started, obviously this is a readout, everybody knows that. There's two wires on the bottom of this. The one that connects to this cable, you'll know because male, female, there is going to go together. This is, is the wire that you would use for a, a dirt bike. This other wire is for a battery. So if you don't have a battery on your bike, you're never going to use that wire. You're, you'll just end up uh, zip tying it off or something like that. This is the sensor. This is what will go on to your brake caliper on your front wheel. A magnet will pass through this and this is what will make this thing work and it will also turn it on. Here's the parts that will connect it to your handlebars and it even came with some zip ties and somewhere in here is the magnet screw that you'll need. This is the wire that you would use for a battery so if you have a dirt bike that has a battery on it you would use this and this is your bling sticker which is super important. This is the piece that connects to the bike so you use whichever piece is appropriate for you and you'll end up putting the bolt through here uh, and using a nut on the other side uh, to keep that tight. So that's how that works. So this attaches to the handlebars. You can use this one or the other one. The only difference I think is that one of them is a little bit wider than the other. And this goes on here just like that and then you adjust it however you want till you get the angle just right for your bike there's grooves on this and there's also grooves on this piece. Now this is probably kind of hard to see but it'll make sense I'll uh, put it on. Those grooves connect though. They're just little teeth you know like a like a little puzzle goes together. And you put that on like that and then you can adjust it before you tighten it because a bolt will go through here to tighten those things together. I'm taking this off. I think it'll be way easier if I take this off. I'll be able to see it better, and so will you. Special note, just figured this out because I did it wrong. One side actually is notched out to take the bolt, and if you put the bolt in that side, it'll fit in there just right. Clearly, that's the side you want to have the bolt in, and the other side uh, is the side that you want to put the screw through. For me, I have stock handlebars on this Kawasaki, and it looks to me like I need to use the smaller one as opposed to the bigger one, even though when I was just kind of looking at it, I thought I'd have to use a bigger one. Also, it looks like I gotta, I gotta kind of pry this thing apart just to get it on there. Okay, let's try this. I'm gonna have to pry this apart a little bit just to get it around the bars, so I'm gonna see if I can get it started. I have it upside down. Don't want to make that mistake, but it looks like, yeah. So if you just take something, stick it in here and pry this apart just a little bit. See, stick something in here and then you can pry it apart a little bit. You don't, you won't break it. It's pretty tough, but uh, I suppose you could break it. Now watch me break it. But if you just get it started, I just drop the bolt but I have another one, so there. Now it's on there. And it almost, I mean, it's pretty snug just the way it is, but I'll need to find that bolt and uh, put it through there. You need both of these bolts. So apparently the smaller bolt goes in here when you connect it. Um, when you connect this piece to your handlebars, the longer one is actually used to go through here and connect this. I was trying to get this on here using this uh, bolt and nut and it was I was having trouble and then I figured out that in this piece right here you can just um, you can just slip that nut in there. If you can see uh, like right here there's a piece in there you end up taking this nut and just sticking it in there and then it just holds it holds it in place so that makes it easy because 
Now be careful, you don't want to lose it. I already dropped it once and it's a pain in the neck. Of course, if you, um, if you lose it. So you just want to get it started. You can uh, go get your tool and finish it off. Four millimeter um, Allen wrench here. And here's where you can do your adjusting. So if you want it like that, you can do it like that. That looks pretty good to me, but maybe when I'm sitting on the bike, maybe that. Uh, you can always adjust it. I can always come back and adjust it. That's all I need to do. Okay, that's, that's pretty firm on there. I'm just gonna leave these two wires tucked in away up here and I'll move to the wheel, which is gonna be the more tricky part. Looking at the front wheel here of the bike, and the first thing I want to do um, is I want to remove the brake. Uh, I guess it's the caliper here. I'm not a mechanic, but I know what th this is what you do. That's going to be this bolt here and this bolt here. Once I loosen those, this will just slip off. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Man, okay, that was super tight. I don't know if, if they're always that tight up here or what, but though that was really, really tight. I had to get a tool here, as you can see, to just to break that loose. Man, maybe I'm just a weenie. Okay, now. That is how that goes on there. So this piece now, you can see, is all loose. This is your brake. Now, this is the, this is the tricky part. This is where uh, you're, you're gonna wanna lift your bike up now. Um, so if you have a jack, you wanna go ahead and do that so you can get your wheel in there because you're gonna need to spin your wheel around and take a look at some things when you do that. You have these bolts that are that are here, there's four of them. Um, they're right, they're there, 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 and another one over there. One of those is gonna come out, and the one that comes out, you're gonna end up um, putting a magnet, the magnet bolt in that. This bolt right here, there's four of them. One, there's two, there's another one over here, and then there's another one over there where you can't see. It doesn't matter which one you take out. They're all the same. Okay, so I've done a couple of things. I removed uh, this screw that I mentioned from here. Again, any of these four I've removed from there. Now, the kit comes with three different bolts with magnets on them and then a magnet that's loose. For me, I'm going to use this short uh, magnet that is uh, attached to this bolt here because that works best for this bike. So I'm just gonna take that, screw it in there. That, and that's a uh, 10 millimeter. And there's a magnet on it, you can see. So my bike is lifted up right now. I've also taken the brake caliper and I placed it back on there and I put those bolts in there, but I didn't really tighten them. I've left it loose because I'm going to need to spin the wheel around and look where this magnet's going to pass my sensor. Okay, so I've tightened that. So there's my magnet. That's what's going to make uh, that is going to pass. Now, here's the sensor. I've taken the sensor out and or off it comes with you know with this coil but i've taken that off and when i spin my wheel i know that this caliper is in the right spot because the bolts are started i'm going to see this magnet come around and i'm going to see where it passes the sensor. 
And so this is really difficult to see. Um, I'm going to try to get this up here so that you can actually see it better, but I'm not sure I'm ever going to capture this. I'll try it. Okay, so what I'm looking for here, that's what I'm pointing at. That's the magnet. When I turn the wheel, obviously it goes down and it gets really close to the caliper. And what I'm looking for is how close to the caliper is it. Uh, with my particular bike, it might be a little different than yours. But that's going to show me where do I need to put the sensor on that caliper that will be the right distance from the magnet. So I spin it around here a couple of times just to look at how that magnet crosses by the caliper and then eventually I'm going to take that sensor and I'm going to put it uh, I'm going to hold it in place and I'm going to spin it and I'm going to look at it um, that's the toughest part of this in my opinion was to just try to figure that out once I figured it out it wasn't too bad though I marked two little holes on the caliper with a sharpie while I was holding it in place and then I took the caliper off and drilled the holes so that's kind of what I was trying to do here. And there's, you can see there, that's the, the sensor. It screws in here. I'm gonna drill a hole through this. It's not gonna hurt anything. I'm gonna drill a little teeny hole. I'm gonna put that in there and I'm gonna connect it. Okay, I went ahead and marked with a Sharpie on my caliper where I think I should drill two little teeny holes. Uh, eighth inch holes in the caliper to connect the sensor. Now, before I do that, I want to make certain that, that I actually have it in the right spot. So I actually hooked it up on the top. I can actually put this down here and hold it in position. And if I hold it right where it needs to be, because I can look at my mark and there's really only, there's not a lot of spots this could be on the caliper. I know you can't see that from here, but it's pretty intuitive. Once you get it into that spot, there's not a lot, there's not a ton of places it can go. So I'm going to get it right into the right spot. I can see my Sharpie mark there. Keep in mind, I've taken this off. I put the magnet on. I've looked at where I think that magnet is going to cross. Now I've plugged my sensor into the cord or into the cable and I've plugged that cable into the unit itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it in here. I mean this is where it will be on the caliper. I see my little dots and then I'm going to spin this like I'm moving. It's going to if I have it in a good spot, it's going to register something. So it looks like I've got four miles an hour. Um, I haven't looked into all the settings on here, but it did register something. That's good. So at this point, I can go ahead and drill my eighth inch holes into this caliper. So I'm going to go ahead and take this back off. By the way, to get this caliper back on there, <clears throat> you got to make sure your brake pads are apart a little bit. Look, I took a Sharpie, I held the sensor over this, and I, I put two dots. These two small screws are going to go through there. So I'm going to take an eighth inch drill bit and I'm going to drill those holes. Easy, there's nothing on the back of here that I'm going to damage. Okay, so after drilling the hole, the top hole, I don't even think I need the bottom hole. And I can still angle this thing out a little bit and tighten it and it'll still work um, how I want it to work. So I don't have to go straight on the caliper like this. I could just tighten it down like that. It'll be a little closer to the, to the magnet. So there's some uh, adjustment there that I can do. Okay, so now that I have it like this, it'll be much easier for me now. Got to get these apart. My brake pads are need to be pulled apart just a little bit. Okay, once you get your brake pads apart, you want to put this back on. Now, obviously, the sensor is going to be on there. I forgot to record this, 
but you're going to unhook that cable so that you can just hook the sensor up with a small wire on it and then just put your caliper back on. I've finished uh, zip tying the line together so you can see right here uh, is my sensor. Well, it's not the sensor, it's the wire. It runs down. Um, part of that sensor is right up here. Now that's probably hard for you to see, but that's part of it. Anyway, the wire, the cable runs up here, runs right along the brake line, uh, right up here. Um, then I zipped it uh, here several times and went underneath up here in such a way that there was no pressure left on this at all because this wire again is pretty loose. And then there's my readout. So it's pretty much finished. Uh, I've got several friends that have the Trail Tech 2. They say it's great, so I'm hoping I get the same results. Uh, lastly, I'd like to thank Trail Tech, uh, my sponsor, for sending me this unit. Oh, wait. Uh, I bought it myself. And I didn't get anything from Trail Tech. But I'm not above receiving anything, guys. If uh, you want to send me a unit or something, I'd be happy to put another one on, shoot a video, maybe make you some money. I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs>